Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Vinyl finds of a very specific kind. Um, I've got a lot to get through in terms of my general vinyl finds, but I thought I'd break them down a bit into a few categories um, just to make it interesting. Um, so I sort of have inadvertently picked up a, a stack of compilations over the past couple of months. Um, it wasn't seeking out compilations, but that's just the way it's turned out. I have said before that I'm not a massive compilations fan. Uh, I sometimes like the idea of an album being recorded as a piece or a, a theme or a style or, a, you know, I like the idea of listening to a whole album as the artist made it rather than tracks being taken out of context almost. Um, that's very generally speaking. I mean, like, an example that springs to mind is those uh, Krat Rock compilations, those Deutsche Elektronische Music, which are really good compilations for, um, like, jumping off points, for learning to, uh, you know, learn the Krat Rock bands and, and the styles of music within Krat Rock and what those bands' sounds are like. Um, but I just feel that those tracks out of context don't work as well as they would do in the context of the album. Like... You know, there's like a Noi track on there, which is, you know, Noi have that really, you know, endless drumming. They have these really long, repetitive cycles. And um, those, those Noi tracks work within the whole album because the whole album has that sort of feeling to it. Whereas on those compilations, they sort of get taken out and they, you know, switch to the next track really quickly. Um, but that's just like, I, I suppose, Crowd Rock in general has more of a psychedelic flavor. All the albums all have their own feeling or sound to them, so they all feel... You know, I guess part of one piece. What I'm trying to say is so. You know that that's sort of what I think. But then the, the other hand is, some compilations are just are just are really good for learning new things. Like a couple of the ones I've got here, um, are stuff I don't know anything about really. So I, I can you know pick these artists out and learn from them. Um, and then other are compilations that have been put together are from artists that don't have stuff like the Numero group have they do a lot of artists that only released one thing on like a seven inch um and it didn't come out in terms of an album and stuff like that so i can understand and appreciate that um what i might do with this video is show show the five that i is there six there that i picked up and i might show some of my favorite compilations i've had for a while too compilation one is probably something that everybody in the vc has Apart from me, uh, this is the uh, absolute classic Ad Nuggets compilation. Something I've probably seen and I've passed over, you know, 30, 40 times. For whatever reason, I wasn't interested in psychedelic or 60s psych um, for a long time. Only very recently, I've only started paying attention to it for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, this is the place to start, isn't it? Everybody knows this. Uh, every track is, is really wonderful. Um, I feel like I'm probably pre preaching to the choir with this, but I'm, I'm really happy to have it. Um, there's, there's so many bands listed on here that I know the names of, and I've heard so many people talking about them in the VC, especially a lot of the site guys. Um, you know, I, I've, I've sort of got into the 13th floor elevators um, and the seeds, but there's a lot more that I, you know, names I see all the time for you guys, like Chocolate Watch Band. Um, Blues Magoos, all those sort of people. Um, electric Prune, Standales, all that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, this is a reissue of a compilation that came out, I think it was like in 1970 or something. Or, or, it, was, it was really soon after the... Uh, it's 72, there you go. So it came, only came out four years after the whole, um, I guess, original psych thing happened. Jeez, I'm so terrible at talking about this. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is done on Rhino from a few years back. Wonderful, wonderful reissue. Um, yeah, it c comes with all these liner notes. Um, talking about the artists and stuff, which is really great to read. Talking about the scene. This is an example of a great compilation because it, it, um, it gives you a sense of the scene or a sound or a feeling. And it's all captured within, within this yeah, 2LP set. So that's a really good one I picked up. Um, this is one I slept on for ages and Anthony gave me a kick up the arse and said, you have to get this, you're missing out. Um, and I think Diana showed this a while ago in one of the videos and it was like a prompt. Because I remember when this came out and it was sort of getting a lot of 
uh, attention. This is uh, Forge Your Own Chains, Psychedelic Ballads and Dirges. Um, uh, wonderful artwork here. <sighs> to be honest, the title probably put me off a bit called Psychedelic Ballads and Dirges um, because they're, they're, they're kind of oh, it's heavy psychedelic ballads and dirges. Like to me, these songs are actually really laid back and really groovy and they have just an amazing summary feel to them. Um, it, they're just really cool. Uh, this is a sort of record that you can play on a Sunday when the sun's out and just really chill to it. Um, again, this is a compilation where almost all of these artists have since been uh, reissued on their own records. Um, records I've seen around all the places, I've seen people post them. I didn't actually realize that these records were all connected and actually came from this compilation, which was amazing. Um, Damon had their album Song of a Gypsy. Dr. Hooker has a, it's got like a white cover. I know that record. Uh, East of Underground, I think got a reissue. Uh, Shin Jung Hyun got a reissue on Light in the Attic. Uh, Baby Grandmothers, the Swedish psych rock band, they had a reissue a couple of years ago. Uh, probably more that I don't, haven't spotted yet. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird yeah, that this, a lot of stuff got reissued off of the back of this. But yeah, this is just fucking cool. It's really nice, really groovy. Uh, check out, I mean, Smiling Faces sometimes, which is, I think, is a cover of a other, another song. Let me have a look. I think it might be written here. Yeah, by The Temptations, I thought it was. Um, and there's a really nice song um, called, by, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it, called Let Your Life Be Free by Sizu and the Johnny. Well, I don't know, that's really terrible. I can't read that. Um, yeah, so this is done on Now Again Records. Again, so much information. Uh, two LP, really well done. I, I can highly recommend that. Um, I just can't believe I had not heard that record, or it's not what I thought I was, what it was. Um, <laughs> is this, this is an album of the decade in terms of artwork, firstly. Wow, yeah, this is amazing. As a graphic designer, I'm just obsessed with this cover. Uh, I find myself staring at it for hours and hours. Um, absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is a, for me, this is the ultimate. It's a record. The music is, is killer. The packaging is outstanding. Um, yeah, this is called uh, Warfaring Strangers Acid Nightmares by Numero Group. It came out last year. Um, comes with a, see the only, the only slight criticism I have is that the sleeves are too thick for the records to come in and out of. Um, it comes with this wonderful booklet. I mean, look at that artwork. Uh, it's, it's really cool. The, the basic premise to sort of sum up what this record is. See, so Numero Group, what they do really well is they can sell a story or they can sell like a theme or an idea or a I guess they can collect music together and sell it as a package. You know, they had their um, Wayfaring Strangers Cosmic American Music and there's like a, a Yup Rock one and what they've done here is they've collected stuff that came out sort of to the back end of the hippie era um, and, and they talk about how people started to take too much acid or you know, bad brown acid, how things went wrong and how it really captures a moment from when the hippie scene sort of mutated into like the proto hard rock stuff and onto Sabbath. Um, and it's, and it's awesome because they've nailed it in terms of, yeah, they've absolutely captured that, that crossover period. Uh, and they sell it as a story really well. And, and they're not just collecting, um, bands from sort of like the San Fran area. They've actually got, you know, there's bands here from, I think, uh, the UK as well. Um, I think there's some from Germany. Um, they're really sort of, yeah, they, they sell a concept and they sell a style and yeah, I mean, it, it's that, it's that crossover of, yeah, the end, the end of hippie culture and the, the early bikey, bikey gangs, uh, yeah, proto metal, I suppose it's mainly hard rock, but yeah, all, all the singles are basically, um, private presses. Uh, they came out on, you know, seven inches only, you know, they go for stupid money or you just can't see them on discogs. So this is, an this is an example where the artists don't necessarily have their own albums, or if they do, they're very rare. Very cool. Um, this, this illustration tells a story of 
a a guy, I think he was a hippie in the San Fran cult, culture and scene, and he took took too many drugs and he crashed his Harley Davidson down the street in uh, Haight-Ashbury, and apparently that was sort of a bit symbolic at the, at the time of the shifting times and the, the way things were going bad, the end of the hippie culture, um, you know, that, that crash was like a, a, a sign of the times, I suppose, uh, which is really cool. And it's really cool that Numero Group talk about all the stuff when you read the booklets. Um, it really adds to the whole concept or the, the theme of the, the compilation, really. Um, but yeah, please check this out. And you, should, you guys should get this. It's, it's really cool. Uh, yeah, Acid Nightmares um, by Numero Group, 2017. Um, all right, two. Um, this is a box that I picked up recently. Uh, it's a, a UK box set on Trojan Records called Tighten Up. Um, so Tighten Up was a, they're, they're sort of legendary compilations of, uh, I guess, Roots and Rocksteady music from the UK. Now, I'm not by no means an expert on this sort of stuff. Um, this is exactly why I picked up the compilation. Um, here's the labels. Each, each, each song has a really uplifting um, sort of sound to it. It's, the sound quality is pretty terrible. It's by no means an audiophile recording. I slightly find it a bit hard to listen sometimes, but the amount of soul and the amount of passion that's in here is uh, completely, you know, wonderful. I, f I find I really enjoyed Tighten Up Volume 2. So I think, I think there was about eight or nine volumes of Tighten Up. This is the first three compiled into the box, which is really cool to have. Um, when I saw, I opened it up and I saw the, uh, the names on here and I was like, okay, there's so many names on here that I know, but I've never heard. Um, Kingstonians, obviously the Upsetters, uh, Maytals, these are the big names, Ken Booth, uh, Byron Lee is on here. Uh, Jimmy Cliff is on here. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of big names. Uh, and a little bit of a, a thing here uh, talking about it. So parts of it get a bit samey samey for me. Um, so I find it hard to digest all three. But I've got to bear in mind that these all came out separately as their own little things. Um, I find that there's a, a cover of Obadi Obadar by the Beatles and Angel of the Morning, these two here, which completely don't do anything for me, which is a bit of a turn off. But in terms of, uh, you know, getting that, that really sort of like happy, joyful reggae, it sounds like sunshine. It's not like, you know, it's not dark and heavy. It's not spiritual. Well, it, it kind of is. It's almost like Gospel is not the right word, but it has something, some magic sunshine in it that, that you, can't, uh, you can't describe as I'm struggling to do. Um, yeah, really wonderful stuff. Tighten up, one to three. Yes. I mean, look at that for a cover for volume two. Okay, so when I was going back to editing this, I realized I just missed out a whole section that I wanted to say when I was talking about uh, the Tighten Up record box set. Um, so rather than just letting it slide, I thought, why not do a little side edit and uh, chuck this in here. Jesus Christ, look at my hair. Um, <laughs> normally I film on a digital camera so I can never see myself. Um, but now, now I can, and I'm just like, what the hell is going on? Um, so yeah, I was talking about this. Um, what I didn't really explain about it is um, when these sort of, they're basically in sort of the mid mid to late seventies, the um, what was known as reggae or Jamaican music was making massive inroads in the UK, and you know I think there was some crazy amount of like, it was something like twenty tracks were getting into like, the top one hundred in the UK, um, and I think previously they were only sort of popular with uh, like Jamaicans and like skinheads, so uh, like UK punks, um, they were massively into. Um, yeah, the early rock steady reggae stuff, um, which is kind of interesting. I'd love to read more about that and how that sort of happened. Um, so these compilations, when they came out originally called Tighten Up, they were sort of like special low priced compilations which covered all the major hits. Um, and I think they were like 99 cents when they came out. And yeah, I said before there was like eight volumes, but each volume, the cover got slightly tackier. 
uh, or slightly cheesier. I think uh, volume four has like a naked woman and um, she's like covered in uh, like lollies or maybe sweets, candy, whatever you want to call them. Um, but yeah, these are the early ones, the first three. Uh, I, I wish something like, uh, it, it's it's hard to, I don't, I don't know much about reggae to describe the music, but if you know like Toots and the Maytales, it's like that early rock steady root sound to it. It's very joyful. Um, I might just chuck the needle down because I've got it on. So yeah, this is uh, Maytel's Monkey Man. But yeah, that was kind of a, that's probably more of an explanation of what I was trying to get across. So I mean, they're, they're kind of essential in terms of music, music history and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, very, very happy to have this. It's cool, joyful. That's what I'm trying to get across. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, I was really happy to grab that. Um, it's, it's again, for me to sit and listen to it with my full attention is very hard just because the quality is a bit rough, but kind of in a charming way. And, it, and I don't know, sometimes reggae when it's kind of a sounds a bit shit, sounds really good. I don't know how to, if that ever makes sense. Um, but I found I was cleaning the house on the weekend and I put it on and I was, just not, I was only half paying attention and it went down really well. So I don't, I don't know. Um, the last one. I've, I've shown this a couple times before, but there's a story story behind it. So this is a uh, Cosmish Music. This is an original German pressing, uh, not a cheap record at all these days. Um, I was having issues with this record. I've talked about previously being quite noisy. Um, this, is, this is a really big story. Like I'm going to try and like shorten down. So obviously I've been trialing this ultrasonic cleaner for a while now. I've been telling people I'm going to make a follow-up video with my thoughts on it. Um, basically, I've been cleaning records and I haven't been getting the results that I've wanted to get out of them. Um, records, you know, I mean, Anthony was saying to me, his records are coming out silent. Like he can put something in the cleaner for an hour and it will come out, you know, mint. And I wasn't getting that and it was frustrating me. And I was starting to think maybe the tank wasn't working. I was just testing my solutions. Um, I was trying all these things and it was annoying me because it was taking up so much of my time physically but also mentally thinking about it, you know, should I send the, the tank back? You know, I took the tank apart to have a look to make sure everything was working. Sort of stressing, not stressing about it, but it was just on my mind. And then I was playing a record. Basically what happened is a friend came over uh, to listen to some records with me and I was getting all this distortion on my needle. And I was like, oh, that's really weird. And it, it was really annoying me. So I decided after he left, I switched over the cartridge to, to an older cartridge that I, it's based, I don't know if you can see it in the frame here, but it's a, like a DJ cartridge. And I played a record that I washed and it came out silent, uh, a record that I thought was really noisy. So, you know, bang, the, need, the needle is, is the issue. It, I've had it for five years, which is, you know, it should be three to four years and I've had it for five. So I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier, but I just thought, you know, an old needle, I would get a reduction in sound quality. I didn't really think that I would actually get the noise, you know, the, the needle is causing noise in my, in my records, which is really strange. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard. It could be just the DJ cartridge is really good at eliminating noise, or it could be the needle is causing the noise. Uh, if anyone has any thoughts, please let me know. So I'm going to get another needle. It's not going to be cheap, but at least I know, I think I know the ultrasonic cleaner is working. That's where I'm at with that. But back to this, this was a record I thought I was going to have to sell, but under this, this cartridge here, I mean, this, this DJ cartridge, it doesn't sound anywhere near as dynamic as what I had before, but it's quiet. So at, at the moment, <laughs> it's hard. It's a hard trade-off. Anyway, so th this has been rescued basically, which I'm really happy because I didn't want to get rid of it, but it was just um, because it's really like spacey, ambient, early Tangerine Dream, early Klaus Schulze, the noise really affected on it. But um, look at this. I can't read any of it. I have no idea what it means, but it's all in German. Uh, it just looks cool to read. 
Um, unfortunately, the side, the fourth side is still unlistenable because it's got all this weird paint splatters in it. But three sides of the four are absolutely mint now. I love that artwork there. I think that's so cool. So yeah, this is really cool that it, it captures all that early electronic, co cosmish electronic stuff. Um, and it came out at the time. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a reissue looking back, you know. Uh, you got Popo Vaughan on here, Klaus Schulze, Asherah Temple, Tangerine Dream. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's awesome. It's really cool. Sorry, I clearly can't talk and uh, show records. So, so that's that. Um, I'm really happy that I've brought it back from, you know, almost having to sell it, really. Uh, and now I can listen to it and I can really enjoy it without hearing the noises and the crackles. So that's uh, some compilations I've sort of had over the last couple of months. I'm going to do a second part now where I'll show you some of my favorite compilations that I have and I've had for some time. Cool. Okay, so I just realized one of the compilations I really wanted to show is actually not with me here but it's in storage, which was really annoying. I thought I had it here for some reason. Uh, I thought I had it upstairs, uh, which is where my overflow records are, but I don't. So, but that record is due to the uh, wonders of the internet. I can put a little thumbnail thing here. Uh, it's Spiritual Dress 4, and it's called uh, Americans in Europe. And it's a, a compilation talking about all the guys that left America and started making music in a, uh, you know, in Europe, people like Don Cherry who went over there, and uh, Lee Connitz went over there. He has a really nice spiritual Jack track. Uh, spirit, there. Lee Connitz, who I would normally write off as being pretty middle of the road, he has a, a track called I think it's called Five Three and One or something like that on this compilation, and it's a, a wonderful track. It takes my breath away. Um, but but it has I'm trying to remember who's on it now. A, ho a whole bunch of people that yeah Americans that went over and they. They left America and they and they started up playing jazz in in Europe and influencing a lot of the European guys. Um, I think Albert Albert Ayler's on there. Um, oh, wow, I wish I had a better memory of this. <laughs> anyway, killer compilation. I highly recommend that one. Um, this is a favorite for me. Uh, Bosphorus Bridges, a wide selection of Turkish jazz and funk, uh, 1968 to 1978. Um, so side A is like, it's basically Turkish funk. Uh, and it's absolutely fantastic and uh, knocks my socks off every time. Uh, it's basically funk with like an Eastern influence to it. Um, it's probably not far off from those Thai funk records that people are talking about. Um, and I think, especially lately, I've seen a lot of people talking about them. Um, but yeah, this is a lot more has like Arabic sounds to it and stuff like that. It's 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 a killer. And then the second side is the jazz stuff, uh, Turkish jazz. So as as an all round compilation, it's it's bloody great. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think there's two two volumes. This I've only got the one, but yeah, Bosphorus Bridges and their artwork is just uh, sublime too. Uh, yeah, Beatles reference there. But yeah, there's lots of name, names on here that all got reissued as well. Um, Erkin Kore is one that I know in OK Timmy's. He did some work uh, with jazz players too, uh, the Swedish jazz players. So yeah, that, that's an all-time favorite for me. Um, I made a big deal about these uh, a few years ago when I discovered them. And there's five in the series, I've got all five. I just grabbed this one out of the stack. This is Wildflowers 2, um, Loft, Loft Jazz Sessions. Um, all the big names are on these records. Marion Browns, Anthony Braxton's, Ken McIntyre's, um, Leo Smith, the next Sam Rivers. You know, uh, they, these are just wonderful uh, avant-garde jazz, free jazz, uh, wonderful recordings. Uh, they, they're all they sound almost like live, and there's a real nice atmosphere to them. Uh, there's a whole there's yeah, a series of five of them, uh, and they've got stunning artwork. Uh, these, these are all-time favorites for me. What else we got? I'll save that one for the end. <laughs> uh, I picked this up when I was first learning about Brazilian music. This came out like 2012 or 13. So for people that keep up with a lot of like uh, modern reissues and stuff like that, and a lot of a lot of modern reissue labels, um, they know that Brazilian music is all the rage right now. It's sort of dropped off a bit this year, but last year, the year before. 
Brazilian records were getting reissued left, right, and center. Everyone was interested in them. Um, you know, like your Marcos Valle, Tom Zay, Tim Meyer. <sighs> just every, everyone was going Brazilian crazy for, for a while there. Um, I think now the, the shift has sort of moved from what I'm sensing in certain circles. Uh, Japanese jazz is the next big thing. Uh, Spiritual Jazz are releasing a, um, the late, uh, the label is Jazzman and they do those spiritual jazz compilations and they go all around the world. So the last one was Islam, uh, they've done Europe, they've done uh, African, this next one's going to be uh, jazz, uh, spiritual jazz in Japan. So I feel like, yeah, the next the next big thing is Japanese jazz reissues. That, that's my thoughts anyway. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you in a few months, but yeah, I, I reckon the next big thing is, yeah, Japanese jazz reissues. But anyway, yeah, Gal, Gal Costa, all that stuff was all been reissued in the last couple of years. You know, the labels have just like pillaged that shit and reissued it. But yeah, this, this came out just before that, um, 2000, I think it might have been 2011 or 12, but it has all, all the names on it. Gilberto Gil, Caetano Veloso, Gal Costa, George Ben. Uh, this was a big one for me in terms of like, because, because you know, people talk about Brazilian music and then they talk about Tropicalia and I was like, what the fuck is Tropicalia? How does that relate into the, the, the scheme of things in terms of Brazilian music? It's not just Brazilian music. It's like a, a, um, a political movement or a story, you know, within the politics of Brazil at the time, within how it relates to popular music in Brazil at the time. Um, you know, Brazilian music is, is way more of a, broader term, but this, you know, specifically talks about, um, you know, the change in, in government, the way people were treated, there was like a couple of coups, um, you know, how, how drugs came into, you know, popular circulation in the 60s and 70s in Brazil, like, you know, I love this compilation because this tells you about everything that's going on around this music, uh, it gives context to it. Um, it talks about what music was like before this came around. Um, yeah, it, it's called the Brazilian Revolution of Sound. And I love it, again, because it talks about context. I, I love context in terms of music. I love reading about why, what shaped the music, you know. Um, a couple more I was going to pick was the one that I rave about all the time is the Cosmic American Music one. But I've shown that recently, so I wasn't going to do that. Um, the next one... I was talking with uh, Fred uh, recently um, and I, I posted this record and we sort of agreed. And he, he said it could be the best compilation ever or at least the best French compilation ever or it could be the best jazz camp compilation ever. I absolutely agree. I, I love this record to pieces. And uh, not many, I don't remember seeing a lot of people posting this or so it didn't get much attention. Um, maybe three or four people. I don't know how hard this is to get now, but uh, I think this is just amazing. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's spacious. Uh, you, you've just got, again, again, stuff that all got reissued. Uh, Francois Tosk, Noah Howard. Um, the, the tracks, the opening track, Notes Are High by Stella Levitt, takes, it's a vocal jazz track where it takes my breath away. Um, yeah, they're done by, this is one of the first Heavenly Sweetness uh, reissues, I think. Um, Wonderful artwork, just just capturing a lot of uh, French jazz in the seventies. Uh, bits of spiritual jazz, bits of like just beautiful. I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it's just really cool. Just give it a listen. Uh, I I love this so much. And when Fred said he reckons it's his favorite, I was like, you know, maybe he's onto something there. I I can kind of agree with that because yeah, I I played the track uh, on Face C by Francois. I'm really terrible at pronouncing this. Tusk. It's like an 18 minute gorgeous track and I just stopped what I was doing, I listened to the whole thing and I just, it was just magical. I, uh, I loved it and that was partly what inspired me to make this video um, as well as picking up the recent compilations, um, you know, the ones I just showed before. So yeah, that was that. Um, I think it's the first time I've done a compilations video so it's kind of something different. But yeah, I'll be back probably after Easter, maybe a while, um, to talk about some new finds. I might do another you know, I've got some jazz stuff I'd like to show, so I might do a jazz video. Um, we'll see how we go. But yeah, anyway, uh, thanks guys. Uh, I'll see you all in the future.